we're going to be designing and creating a syringe powered or syringe controlled human powered robot arm and actually excavator is a better term for it because we're going to be excavating plastic pellets out of a bucket and just like an excavator would excavate dirt out of your backyard and what we're going to do is we're going to design all our parts uh, in Fusion 360 first. So we're going to have some of them be 3D printed, some of them laser cut, and then we're going to be able to test our design in Fusion 360. And then we're going to be able to actually take those files and use them to make our uh, final project. It should work the first time out if we do everything right. Anyway, Fusion 360 does a lot of cool things, and uh, I've rendered up a little image of a syringe with a couple of 3D printed mounting brackets right on here. And, uh, you know, okay, we're not going to be using glass syringes. Probably not a great idea in the high school shop to be running around with a bunch of glass syringes. We're going to be using plastic ones, but they render up so nicely when they're in plastic. Anyway, we'll talk about rendering later on. Let's get out of the render window and let's go back to where you're going to be starting your design. And of course, you're going to start in the design menu. It won't look quite like this. It'll uh, look more like this. But just so you know, uh, eventually we're going to be able to link all this together so that as we move things back and forth, you're going to be able to see how your design works and moves. And it's all going to be dimensionally accurate and it should work in the real world. Okay. I'm going to close this off here and take you to where we're going to get started. So I don't want to save those changes. Uh, if you're already in a project, you might have to hit home, but uh, otherwise you'll be at your start menu right on here. If this window right here is not showing up, okay, it might look something like this and you've got the whole screen. That's what these little squares right up here in the top corner do for you. They open that back up and we can go ahead and create a new project. And I'm going to call this syringe, syringe excavator. Okay, and uh, let's go ahead. And now we've got a syringe excavator project and you can double click that project and it takes you into that project. And you can see you've got a blank folder to store all of the files that you're gonna need. And that's important because we're going to be making a lot of files in here. The first one we're gonna make is for that little ring that goes around the syringe and allows us to clamp onto the syringe so that we can transfer the syringe's motion into some other part of our robot arm. This is an ideal part for 3D printing. And in another video, I'm gonna show you how we can take this part once we've modeled it, export it into an STL format, and then use a 3D printing program to generate, uh, to slice the files so that we can actually take that and print it out on a 3D printer. But let's get started uh, by coming in here with a new design. And uh, I like to uh, start by giving the designs a name before I start doing anything else with them. So first thing, come in here and let's just uh, save the file. And it's going into the syringe excavator folder. Okay, you wanna make sure that syringe excavator or whatever you've decided to call this folder is selected. And I'm just going to call this syringe collar. And let's make this for a 12 milliliter syringe. Okay, this is great. Later on, we'll model the syringe, but um, right now we're just gonna model the collar. So uh, we need to uh, start most of our designs by creating a sketch. And uh, to create a sketch, you come up here to the create sketch icon and click on plus, and it gives you a choice of three planes on which you can start creating your sketch. And this doesn't really matter so much whether you choose the X, Y, or Z plane to start your sketch on. Um, let's choose this plane right here, just because. Now, what we've done is we've switched from a three-dimensional workspace into a two-dimensional workspace. 
In the two-dimensional workspace, uh, the sketch palette over here with uh, some of our options immediately uh, pops up for us, as well as the constraints and some of the sketch tools uh, that we have available for creating our two-dimensional sketches. The bottom of the screen right down here, you can see uh, some of the tools for controlling your display settings. You can zoom in on things if you're not automatically zoomed in already. And uh, if you're having trouble moving things around or don't have a center mouse button on your mouse, you can use this to switch between pan, uh, orbit for rotation when you're in a 3D view. Uh, you can even choose a particular object to look at to get a particular orientation when you're looking at it from a 3D view. But we're in 2D mode right now. And uh, I'm going to start this 2D drawing off by giving us some construction lines to work from. And uh, construction lines are just that. They're lines that you can put into your drawing to help you build things, but uh, they won't show up in the final drawing. So I'm gonna start with uh, two lines. So you click on line, and notice I turned on construction already. That's blue right there. And uh, you can zoom in a little bit because uh, we don't need it to be too big. We're not making something 25 millimeters long. And let's uh, just zoom right down here. And there's a 31 millimeter long construction line. That's a lot longer than we're gonna need. Now, you'll see that my line drawing wants to keep on going until I hit that checkbox. And there we go, got that turned off. And now I can come in here and I can create another construction line. Now I've got a dotted line showing up in there, showing me that I'm perfectly tied in to the midpoint right up above, that center point of the drawing. And uh, there we go. And again, hit that checkbox. And now I've got two construction lines. We're gonna use those later on for uh, getting some of our X and Y references because the next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna start drawing uh, the actual clamp. And the clamp is gonna be round, which means it's not gonna have a lot of reference points to connect to. So, since we're actually going to create a real physical object now, turn off construction lines and come up here and create a circle. And the circle is going to come down here and its center point is going to be right here where those two lines meet. And the circle is going to be, uh, let's see, this is the diameter of the circle. We're going to make it about 12 millimeters. Now, the cool thing about Fusion 360 is that I don't know that my syringe is 12 millimeters in diameter. Maybe my syringe is 10 millimeters in diameter. If I want, I can come back here, I can click on that circle, I can apply a dimension to it, and it says it's a 12 millimeter diameter circle. Well, I can change that to a 10 millimeter diameter circle just by changing the dimension on there. If we set our drawing upright, all of our uh, instructions for creating the drawing are in there parametrically, which means that when we change one, that dimension will change, the things that depend on that dimension will change, but uh, nothing else in the drawing will change. So uh, anyway, let's uh, hit undo, and let's go back to that being 12 millimeters in diameter. Now, uh, running around the outside of that, we're gonna have another circle. And we're going to have that just be a little bit bigger. And this is gonna form the wall of our, uh, uh, of our clamp. And we'll put that dimension right down here. And let's dimension that one to be, now right now it's sitting at 15.03. We're going to do something pretty cool here. We want this to always be three millimeters of wall thickness. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna click on this dimension right here, okay? And we're gonna go plus three. So now this computer will parametrically go in there. Any time we change dimension one, it will say, okay, well, what's dimension one? Add three millimeters to it. And I've got 15 millimeters diameter. So if we come back later on and decide to reuse this model for a bigger syringe clamp, we can click on the 12 millimeter diameter, change it up to 20, and now this still gives us a three millimeter wall thickness. Let's undo that. 
Okay, this is pretty good so far. Uh, now, what we're going to have to do is, because we want this to be able to clamp, is we need to be able to cut a piece out right down the middle right here. And to do that, uh, I'm just going to offset uh, this to either side. So there's this uh, really cool tool called Offset. Now it is uh, actually hidden away under the Modify tool menu. Okay, so under the Modify tool menu, you'll see Offset, or you can just press the O button. So I am going to offset this line, and I'm going to offset it by one millimeter to that side. Press Enter. And I'm going to offset it. And you can drag this over here. And you'll notice when I come to the other side of the line, it moves it into the negative dimensions. So I can actually come in here and go uh, negative one. There we go. Now that's going to enable us to create a gap right in here and remove that section of the uh, uh, of the circle. We just don't need that coming through right there. The next thing I'm going to do with it is I'm going to come through and I'm going to uh, do another offset on here. I'm going to offset this one out to this way a little bit so that we can build a wall that comes up here to hold this part of the circle in place. So let's take that and do an offset again. We'll take that line and we'll drag it out. We want it to come more than one. We're going to come out and we'll give it a two millimeter wall thickness. So let's make that uh, go out to, uh, let's see, we had one millimeter gap. We want a two millimeter wall thickness. Let's go out to three and let's do another offset and drag that over to this side and we'll do minus three. Okay, so now uh, when we go to uh, expand our structure, we can uh, come in here and we can always use these as our reference points. To create the uh, wall structure that's gonna come up uh, on this side, Let's just come in here and create a rectangle right here. And we're going to create that rectangle so that it comes down right in here and right in here. So now we're going to be able to take this section, come right up through here, and then we've got a wall right here. This is going to be a clamp that we can squeeze together right on there. Okay. When you're done with the offset, uh, you can come over here and just click cancel, or you can hit the escape button on your keyboard. Now what we'd like to be able to do is we'd like to be able to dimension this height right here so that later on it's going to be tall enough to hold a nut. And so what I'm going to do right here is I'm going to create a point right here so that we can actually dimension to that. And so if you come to the create menu and tell it we want a sketch point, we can put that sketch point right at that intersection and we'll create a sketch point if you need to zoom in make sure it is snapped right to that intersection. We don't want it snapping to the grid. It's really easy for it to snap to the grid, but we want that right on that intersection. You should be able to zoom in and see that that's very neatly and tidily there. And now we should be able to come in here and tell that we want to dimension from the top right here down to that sketch point. And we're gonna need to put a nut in there. So we want that to be least nine mil nine millimeters up. there we go and we'll do the same on this side so that that matches and again we don't have to type that dimension in we can just say we want it to match dimension number seven and those two are matched together right now so there we've got a couple of flanges that we're going to later be able to put a screw hole through 
and clamp those together. And we've got our uh, syringe body uh, clamp that's going to come around right here. The next thing that we're going to want to do is we're going to want to add um, uh, the, the mount points that come out to the side right here. And to do that, we're going to uh, take a rectangle right here. And we're just going to draw it right over top of the whole thing. And again, don't worry too much about dimensions because we're going to come in here and we're going to set it up right. We're going to say that this dimension right here goes from right here to right here. And let's put it down here. We don't have a lot of writing down there yet. And let's set that to be 15. Okay. Now everything moved over right there. But we also want to take this dimension right here and dimension to right there. And we want this to be exactly in the middle. So I click on D9. And now those are both exactly at 15. And so we're going to come in and we'll dimension this now. And we're going to dimension from that top line to the center of the circle. And we're going to set that to be 3 millimeters. And we'll do the same thing from this line to the center of the circle. We'll set that to be 3 millimeters. And now we've got our rough outline of uh, the part that we want to end up making. And so we can actually finish our sketch. So you can click finish sketch either right here or the big green check mark right up here. Makes me happy to finish the sketch this way. And this drops me back into our three dimensional environment and we can see the outline of the part that we're about to make. Now in your three dimensional environment, uh, if you're using a three button mouse, uh, zooming in and out is done by rolling the center mouse button up and down. Pressing it and holding it gives you panning. Okay, so you can drag it around like that. And you can come up here and you can use the, uh, uh, the navigation box right here to orient yourself in the drawing and see it from a 3D perspective. If you want finer detail control on uh, looking around in there, click on the orbit button. And now you're able to orbit around here and rotate and see it from different viewpoints. Okay. Uh, if you come to the outside, you can rotate like that. And on the inside, you rotate like that. It's a pretty standard way that Autodesk uses to uh, r rotate and uh, spin things around. Now, personally, I like to use a 3D mouse. I've got something called a Space Mouse by a company called 3D Connection. And I really like it if you're going to do a lot of CAD. You just touch the Space Mouse. I'm not using my two-dimensional mouse anymore. And I can zoom in and I can zoom out and I can rotate and I can spin. And so I've got my left hand doing that while my right hand runs the mouse. Fairly efficient, just like it used to be back in the old days. One hand on the keyboard, one hand uh, on the mouse. Anyways, you can come back here, set it back to typical pan mode, and uh, when you're all done and ready to go on to whatever you need to do next, uh, let's go ahead and do that. So, we want to extrude. And uh, extrude just takes your sketch and squeezes it out like toothpaste from a tube of toothpaste. So, click on extrude, and the extrude box pops up here. And it gives you a number of options. The first thing you're going to do is you're going to select your profile. This is the two-dimensional shape that you're going to extrude. So let's come in here right now and say, well, we're going to start with this circle right here. And uh, careful how you position your mouse. It should turn nice and blue after you've selected it. Now, if you've mistakenly selected something and you're like, oh, I don't want to extrude that, click on it again, and it disappears. Okay. Uh, so we're going to come through here. We're going to extrude that section. We're going to extrude that section. Section, this section, this is going to get extruded out. And there is the profile of the object that we're going to be creating. So we've got that all selected in there. Um, it's starting from the profile plane. That's the two-dimensional plane that we did our drawing on. 
we're coming out to only one side. There will be times when you want to extrude to both sides of that plane, but one side is plenty for now, and we're going to extrude a certain distance. Sometimes we'll want to extrude to an object or uh, you know a number of various options, but we're going to extrude that, and we're going to take that out uh, 8 millimeters. And I pressed enter, and our extrude is complete. And now you have a nice looking prototype. We could actually take that and 3D print it right now. You'd manually have to drill a hole to go through here and manually have to drill a hole to go through here. Uh, but we could turn that into a clamp and we could clamp that onto our syringe. Now, a couple of things to note about the Fusion 360 user interface is that as you're going along and using this, uh, we're getting a timeline building up here in the bottom. And this little bar shows us where we're at in the timeline. So right down here, we just did an extrude. And before that, we created an, a sketch. And if you bring your timeline back this way, well, now you're back and that extrude uh, never actually happened. You can go back in time. Uh, it'd be so handy to be able to edit life that way. Anyway, uh, not likely to be happening anytime soon. Let's come in here and uh, let's take a look at some of the things that we can do on here. Now we want to drive a hole right through here and out the other side. So if we want to find the center on here, there's all sorts of ways you can go about doing it. Uh, my favorite way is to create a sketch on that surface. So I'm just going to tell it that I want to create a sketch. I'm going to come down and I'm going to create it on this surface now instead of one of the planes. And this pops up right here. So I'm working on this plane right here. And because I want the detailed information of where that plane is to transfer information from your existing model into a sketch plane, you create a projection. And you can pick any uh, face or surface in your 3D model and you can project it onto your sketch plane. So I'm going to go project and I'm going to project that object right there. And I'm just going to click OK. And now I've got those reference points right there. And I'm going to turn on my construction lines again. And with my construction lines turned on, I'm going to draw two other lines, one from right here right to there, and one from right here to right here. And that creates a nice little center point for me right there. And I am going to mark that center point by coming to my Create menu and coming down here and telling it I am creating a sketch point right at the intersection of those two. OK, and that's all I'm doing right there. I'm just going to finish that sketch. And I'm going to come back out here. And now it's like somebody's come along and taken a scriber and marked an X on there and left me with a center dot right on there. So when I come along and tell it I want to create a hole, uh, it's going to ask me face or sketch points. In other words, where do I want to put it? Well, there's a sketch point right there. And there we go. I've got a hole going through there. Now that hole's a little bit big and it's a little bit short. But hold with me, and uh, we'll get this worked out. So we've got it located on here. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to tell it, instead of just going a certain distance, I'm going to tell it to go through the object. I could tell it to go through all, but that'll run it through absolutely everything. I just want it going over to this face on this side right here. So you can see that pops up, and it says my hole terminates at the selected object. Now my hole runs through the entire object. The dimension, uh, the diameter is still a little too big. So uh, let's work with that. That's a simple type of hole. You just go ahead and drill it. You can get counter bore, counter sunk type holes. Uh, but what we're actually going to do is instead of having it not tapped or uh, being a clearance hole for a screw, we're actually going to tell it that it's going to be tapped. And we're going to tell it to tap it for a number six machine screw. Now, in 3D printing, usually a number four machine screw fits nicely into a hole that you've told it is threaded for a number six. Um, depends on the accuracy of your printer. You might be able to get a number six in here just fine. 
on the printers I use, I can usually get a number four in there and that works pretty good. So uh, it asks you what thread type you want. I'm going to tell it that I want um, ANSI unified screw threads and the size, you got to scroll down a little bit to find it, is a number four screw, or sorry, number six and a number four machine screw should probably fit in there. And let's just say, okay. And there you go, it renders it up as being tapped all the way through. Now, it, in a wonderful world, uh, our 3D printers would be able to generate that tapping for us. Uh, they're not that good. Uh, okay, you can argue your 3D printer is that good. Mine's not. So we've got a hole running right through there. Now, the next thing we want to do is we want to create a hole right through here so that we can clamp these two sides together. So let's do the same sort of thing right here. And let's come in here and uh, create a sketch on this face right here. Let's project the geometry that we need into the sketch. You can just hit the P button to get this geometry into the sketch if you want. Tell it. OK, I've created the geometry that I want. I'm going to create a couple of construction lines so that it lines up nicely in the middle. Oh, remember to choose I want line. Great way to find the center. OK, and then I'm going to create a sketch point right where those two parts meet. Beautiful. Now, uh, the hole that I'm going to put through here is going to be just big enough to fit a number four machine screw. And so I, well, notice how those lines are dotted. Quickly hit the escape button. We don't want those lines to be dotted. That would mean that they're construction lines. Turn off your construction feature over here. And now when you go and create that circle, it's going to come out as good solid lines. Now the uh, official dimension for a number four machine screw is 2.84 millimeters. Okay, so I'm going to create a, uh, well, let's go with a three millimeter diameter hole. We need to give a little bit of extra clearance um, for that screw to fit through there nicely. Okay, and uh, so now we've got that hole diameter marked off right there. We can see where the center of our machine screw is going to go through. And now we want to create actually a little bit of space for the nut to go on there. We want our nut to lock into place. So uh, let's go ahead and create a um, polygon. And we're going to create a circumscribed polygon. We got a couple of types of polygon that we can create. And let's create a circumscribed polygon and come in right here. And it always creates them slightly differently than I think it's going to. Let's line it up nicely like that. And the dimension that we want to give it is going to be 6.35 millimeters. Now I'm going to say 6.5. Oh, sorry, I want 6.5 millimeters diameter, 3.25 millimeters in radius. And there we go. And now it's in completely horrifically the wrong spot. OK, not a big deal. What we're going to do is we're going to use our constraints. And we've got this coincident constraint. And we're going to tell it that I want this dot right here to be coincident with that dot right there. And now it's centered. Uh, the next thing that we're going to do is we're going to want this to fit nicely onto our uh, onto our um, piece. And you can see that it's not square right now. And we can bring that into square by using the parallel constraint. And we can tell it that we want this side right here to be parallel with that side right there. And now we've got a place for our nut to go right into uh, right into our little clamp section. And what we're going to do is we're going to take that and we're going to modify it with an offset 
and we're going to take that in just a little bit right there so that that side right there well let's zoom in right here and we'd like for that to come right to about that dimension right there we're just going to finish that sketch or sorry not finish that sketch we're going to uh, finish that offset we're going to click ok right here and uh, then we can come in here and we can uh, try dimensioning from here to here oh we can't dimension that because we've got all these other dimensions in place and sometimes you'll get this message saying that that will over constrain the sketch in other words we'll be providing it with the possibility of giving it two different dimensions we'll just click uh, cancel so long as that doesn't overlap on there we're fine and let's take this back to uh, two millimeters of offset one millimeter of offset still too big okay well it looks like our little bracket for holding that nut in place is a bit too big at the moment so what we need to do is we need to go back and we need to adjust the size of our um, of our clamp so let's finish that sketch and what we're going to do right here is we're going to come back into our timeline and so in our timeline well we didn't extrude and as you can see we didn't extrude it quite far enough so double click on extrude we only went eight millimeters let's take that up 10 millimeters and now we've got enough space for it to fit this way but it doesn't have quite enough space to fit in that way so we're going to have to come back to our uh, sketch and where we put nine millimeters right in here and to get here I came to my timeline and double clicked on sketch and let's just change this one up to 12 millimeters and let's finish that sketch and now we've got space for a nut to go right in here and we're sitting at this point on our timeline and we've got this shape right in here and let's go ahead let's just uh, look at it from a 3d perspective so we can see the extrude when that happens you want to be looking at it kind of like this now we got a couple options one is that we can drop this in a little bit into the two millimeter space that we have right here the other is that we can pull this out a little bit and then of course we can drive the hole all the way through so let's do the uh, uh, one where we uh, set this uh, to the outside first a little bit and we're going to do an extrude of this shape right here and let's just bring it up one millimeter now we've got a nice little place for that nut to go into there now one of the things that happens is that erases all of our other sketch geometry on there it's not that big of a deal we can uh, we, we can still use some of the dimensions that we put on there so we're going to come back in here and we're going to create a hole here again we have to come in and give it a sketch point to center on so we just tell it we want to create a sketch let's create it on this plane let's create some construction lines and uh, one line from right here to right there one line from right there to right there and we can finish oh and then let's create a sketch point where did that point button go to creates a sketch point we'll put that right at the middle we'll finish that sketch that's a place where we can drill our hole all the way through and let's create a hole right there now we don't have to go all that far uh, we uh, can tell it instead of distance we want to go through to that face over there and it still remembered what type of screw we did last time that 632 threaded uh, let's uh, let's leave it at that because that usually fits a number four pretty nicely okay 
So now we've got this part. It's got uh, a hole that runs right through here. We can pop a screw in this way. We can pop a screw in this way. This screw could clamp it onto our shaft and this screw could clamp it into our uh, structure and it's pretty good to go. Except it's still kind of ugly. You know, if you're going to 3D print something, you should try to make it look a little bit nicer. Let's see what we can do to make this look a little bit nicer. First of all, we've got a lot of sharp edges up here. They don't have to be sharp edges. Let's round them off with a fillet command. Take that edge, that edge, that edge, and that edge. Oops, I cheated and used my 3D mouse again. You might have to come down here and use the orbit command to rotate around to get in there and collect those four edges. Okay, uh, once you're uh, done doing all that, you can just hit the escape key. And now it wants to know how big do you want that radius to be? Let's try a three millimeter radius. Bet we could get away with a four millimeter radius on there. And that nicely rounds our corners off right there so that they're not pokey on anybody. Uh, we can also come down here and we can fillet some of these corners down here. Okay, let's take that fillet command and pick this side. Oh, may as well pick that side, that side, that side, this side, this side, this side, <clears throat> and orbit around so that you can now hit escape when you're done orbiting. Pick this side, this side, and this side. And let's try that with a one millimeter fill it all the way around there and you'll notice that fusion automatically knew whether to make an outside fillet or an inside fillet it just makes it nice and round now uh, we'll do the same over on this side right here in fact what you can do is you can just go uh, add new selection and you can say that side that side that side Use your orbit command, rotate around here, hit escape, that side, that side, that side, that side, that side, that side, and let's just use orbit to check down here, hit escape, and there we go, and that should be Excuse me. Oh, let's set them to one millimeter. Pardon the cough. Okay. Now, I'm going to cheat on here. We've got a little place for our nut to come in right here. Screw can come across right here. That can clamp that side together to tighten it all up. We've got screw holes right here so we can mount it into our project. And we're all all ready to go and we could take this and we could 3d print it for right now let's hit save okay and it saves it as version one fusion 360 is pretty good in that it keeps different versions of the projects as you work on them the uh, next thing I want to take a look at is okay we made this for a 12 milliliter syringe and we gave it a certain diameter come back in our timeline right to the very first thing that we did. And I said, we didn't have to worry about this 12 millimeter diameter because if we got it wrong, we could change it later on. Let's change that up to 15. Let's see if we've got everything working in our sketch. Finish our sketch. Here we go. We've got a 15 millimeter inside diameter. We're still 30 outside to outside. Maybe we didn't want it to be 30 from outside to outside. You can come in here, go back to your sketch in the timeline, and change this side up from 15. We could change it up to 20. Finish your sketch. And now this is longer, so you could fit it into a wider part of your project. 
I'm cheating and playing with a 3D mouse again. I really like my 3D mouse. Let's hit undo a couple times, get rid of those last couple of changes. Undo that edit, undo that edit. And we're back to where we were before. Let's save that. I always like to save things just to make sure they're kept in there nicely. And you'll see that updates it. We're at V2 now. So to make this project and to kick it out on a 3D printer, we can't use this exact file right here. This file only exists in Fusion 360. What we need to do is we need to get this file out of Fusion 360 and the form of an STL file. And uh, in Fusion 360, you've got a whole bunch of things that you can access. There's some wonderful sheet metal tools. Um, you can come in and you can do all sorts of neat stuff to smooth complex surfaces out. But uh, under tools, click on your tools icon right here and tell it that you want to make the project. And it's got a number of different options for making the project. You can send it straight online and Proto Labs, uh, an online 3D printing company, will allow you to choose whatever material you want to manufacture that from. And you can upload the file to their website. And for just your credit card number and expiry date, they will uh, FedEx to you within a week a uh, 3D printed version in steel or <clears throat> aluminum or the material of your choice. We're going to kick it out as a 3D print on our own printer, though, and to do that, we need it as an STL file. So click 3D print, and it asks you, what do you want to print? We want to print this thing. Now it goes through and it tessellates that entire surface. In other words, it turns it into facets. And uh, it's got different levels of refinement. Uh, you want to take a look at those. Uh, it'll probably do a really good job all on its own. Uh, you can see if you look in here that uh, it didn't keep all that threading detail that was in there originally. Nah, like I say, it's not a big loss. It wasn't going to work on our printer anyway. And uh, you can, if you've got Cura installed, have it sent to your 3D printer. Uh, uh, but otherwise, you can just click OK and it will ask you where do you want to save that file so find a file on your computer where you would like to save that and uh, i'm going to keep it in my 3d printer models folder give it a name uh, that makes sense and then we'll take a look at how to slice it a little bit later on so this is syringe collar and i think we said that was a fifth uh, 12 millimeter ID 30 millimeters across. Now later on we're probably going to come back and change those dimensions when we know what size syringes you're using but you've got the syringe uh, collar all set and ready to go. Save that. Now you've got an SDL file suitable for 3D printing uh, sitting on your hard drive. And that's that. You can close the window right here. Try modeling something on your own. It's pretty easy once you get going. Amazing tools in here. And the more time you spend working with uh, Fusion 360, the more comfortable you will be with the user interface.